Hi there, this is Dave from Aquasci and this is a little piece um, on how we made one particular bass sound in an Aquasky track. Um, but it's, it's a sampled bass sound in particular um, because I'm a big fan of sampled bass sounds. It comes from when we used to use hardware samplers. Um, I think you get a, a different sound to using you know, soft synths, which a lot of people use these days. But anyway, um, this is the track. It's called You A Star. It came out on Passenger recently. <laughs> And that sound there is basically, it's a loop of a sample of a bass sound. And this is how we made it. We use contact a lot for our samples. And I particularly like uh, version two. You get quite a raw sound with it. You can bung any sound into it, loop it up, mess around with it. And you know, just, you get some interesting sounds. So um, to make this bass sound, there's a sound, it's off an old jungle record. I just found and uh, I called it bass three. So you whack it into contact and then you give it an output, which I've already set up some outputs. So it's uh, number three output. Give it a, a MIDI channel you haven't used, so I'll give it 16, because it hasn't been used yet. There we go. And then obviously I had to set up a MIDI track, but I'll do that from scratch. So let's make a MIDI track on Cubase. Okay, assign it, channel 16. As you can hear, it sounds pretty raw at the moment. And if I copy the actual bass MIDI track over, it won't sound anything like the bass that we used. It'll just sound a bit rough at the moment. So then we have to edit the sound a little bit. So if you look at the, uh, the key group, which is that sound. Then the loop editor where you can see the waveform. There it is, it's sort of like, it's got a bass drum underneath it. I think there's some percussion, which are these darker bits, and you can hear the sound. It sounds a bit like an 808 distorted or something. But you can hear the sort of hi-hats behind it. I mean, sometimes these extra little bits make it sound interesting. And what I like to do is loop it up, um, and you get some funny rhythms if your loops aren't exactly in time, which sound good going up and down the key sort of thing. So if I, I play the MIDI track, then I'll uh, put a loop on it. And you can see the, uh, the grayed out area is, is the loop space pretty much. So I'm going to shorten it, you'll be able to hear the sounds get faster. So you can, it's still playing the start of the sample and it's only looping halfway through. So I want it to loop straight away, so I'm going to move the start point. I'll make the loop area a bit bigger. And now you can sort of hear it sounding a bit, you know, a bit tougher, a bit like the sound we used. And um, sometimes it's nice to loop things without hearing a metronome or a rhythm because you get some, you get some crazy timings. But I'll stick the drum track on just so we can hear what, what it sounds like with the beats. So find the uh, drums group in Cubase. Let's have a So it's a bit overpowering at the moment. Um, I'm going to add, I've got a side chain on the compressor. And that's giving it like some sort of ducking effect. It sort of, it sort of makes it tidy when you can hear the bass drum and the snare drum now. And I'm just going to reverse the sample. Um, so I think that's what we did originally and it makes it sound a bit different so I'll try reversing it. Now in contact, um, there's different ways of playing back your sample. Um, you, have to, you have to set it to actual sampler. Then you get the reverse option. And you can hear it's added a different like, dimension to the sound. So I'm just going to tweak the start point and the loop length just to get it nice and tight. And 
there you have it. I mean, that's, I'll play the original sample bass, see if it sounds like that. Play it all together. And I've also added a, a synth underneath it just to give it a bit of a bottom end. And I'll just show you the, um, the actual group the contacts are going through so you can see how I've affected the bass sound with a bit of EQ as well as the compression. So I've got a fine contact in the VST instruments. So there you go. I find a lot of bass sounds, I like to take all the bass off them just to give them more headroom. I mean, you, it doesn't have to be as hard as that. You can sort of take a little bit of bass off and you can just really push the level and you, there's still bottom end in there. In, in, in this particular case, I've added a sub underneath it. But I like to, you know, there's the compressor there, it's doing the pumping. If I turn on the, uh, you've probably seen side chaining a lot, so I'll just, I'll just turn it on and show you what happens when I turn it on. It should be a pump track. Oh, yeah, it's just a bass drum. And there's a bit of a bit crusher, make it a bit harder. I don't know if you can hear it, it's only subtle. But you, you can really sort of fuck it up if you want to. Then just a limiter. It sounds odd, but I like to limit things after being pumped. It just sort of, it doesn't cancel each other out, but you can still get the pumping, but it's not as, I don't know, not as harsh sort of thing. Actually, it's not doing anything here, but if I had a bit of, bit of limiting, you can see it's pumping and it's limiting, but you still get the pump because the release is, is actually longer on the limiter. So it takes longer to react. And that's it, pretty much. That's how we use sample bass sounds.